the root of David. He is the bright. And the Lord is star, the Prince of Peace, the Alpha, and the Omega. Walking in sunlight. All of my journey. Over the mountain, over the mountain. Jesus has said I, well the Lord said I'm never going to say thee, oh Lord that's a promise, divine word, that's a promise that never can fail, oh, oh heavenly, heavenly son, y'all will look like we do, oh heavenly son. So since the beginning of time, the devil has been trying to destroy the male seed. Amen. I want you to know that because there's something powerful not only with the woman, but there's something very powerful with the man. Amen. 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 Would you know that when a woman becomes a born-again Christian, a child of God, right. her family follows her 14% of the time. But if a man, somebody shout a man. Amen. But if a man obeys God and becomes born again, his family follows him 93% of the time. Amen. Which shows you the power of the influence of a man. Mm -hmm. And the devil clearly understands and knows that, so he's been trying to kill male seed. He's been trying to kill male seed, not only that, and incarcerate the male seed. Am I right about Amen. it? And he's been trying to destroy the male seed. So he went after the sons of Hebrew women because the Pharaoh said that if he told the midwives, those who would help the Hebrew women bear children, he said, if you find midwives that there's going to be a male born, Amen. I want you to kill him. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. I want you to put him to, to death. death. Yeah. And the Hebrew midwives did not listen yeah. to Pharaoh yeah. because it's better to put your trust in God yeah. rather yeah. than men. Yeah. 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 They need you to understand. They said, we're not going to kill. So they came up with something and they said, man, these these uh these Hebrew women they are fast, man. Yeah, they just right. they just popping kids out so fast before we could even get to them. Uh, yeah, yeah they're not like the Egyptian <laughs> women. So and so God blessed them because of it. That's right. Because these women, these midwives, feared God That's right. and they did what they needed yeah, to do right. in the right way. Yeah. So I need you to understand that women since the beginning of time has always understood the times. That's uh, right. Because conceiving during that time mm -hmm. because this particular Pharaoh after Joseph somebody shout Joseph, Joseph. 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 he really really tried to allow the hardship mm -hmm. and the rigorous labor to be upon God's people the Hebrew people right. and what he did was he worked them to the core mm -hmm. and now they're being enslaved somebody shout enslaved, enslaved. Right. for all of that time because the Pharaoh tried to work them down to the bone he tried to kill the male children those were the times so if you were a woman mm -hmm. and you were trying to conceive during those times you need to understand something about the times mm -hmm. because if you're going to have a child when you know that Pharaoh has told everybody that if you find a Hebrew boy yeah. you everybody I need you to kill him mm -hmm. throw him in the Nile uh -huh. he has to die so could you imagine being a woman yeah. having a child and conceiving a child under those kinds of conditions wow. knowing that the moment your child is born the devil and including Pharaoh is after your boy if you have a boy. Uh -huh. Now he said the daughters, we can keep them alive mm -hmm. because Pharaoh understood the power of the male seed. Uh -huh. But isn't it ironic that in order to understand the power of the male seed sometimes the female seed has to protect them. Right. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And I need you to clearly understand that because if you don't understand the times in which women had to conceive a child, you won't understand what God had to put inside of women to help them do that successfully. Yeah, Does yeah. anybody here remember the transatlantic slave trade? All right. Yeah. Oh, y'all quiet on this one. Right. 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 Amen. Yeah. So if you had a child during that time, you had to understand the times. Am I right about it? Now, that, that you also have to understand the fact that if a child was conceived uh, in what people call post-slavery time, they had to understand something about that. Yeah. Because slavery was supposedly supposed to be abolished, but we know that was a little bit different. Amen, somebody. Right. And if you grew up during the Jim Crow era, 
you need to understand something about the times if you want to have a child. Am I right about it? Amen. And if you grew up in the civil rights era, you needed to understand something about the times in order to protect your child. Am I right about it? Amen. And even if you grew up today, you need to understand something about the times. Yeah. Because if you look at culture, you can see what children are being born into. So it took some heroic, some great women wow. who had conceived children to keep these children because these women clearly understood the times. Has anybody ever heard of Harriet Tubman? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. She understood the times. Sojourner Truth understood the times. Yeah. Fanny Lou Hamer understood the times. Yeah. Rosa Parks, come over here somebody, yeah. understood yeah. The times. So when you compare the culture in which Moses was conceived to different cultures, you must understand that it took some heroic, wonderful women to conceive these children and keep them. Amen. Amen. Right. If you don't believe, you never understood that, just look at your life and how you were conceived. Yeah. It took, amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. You know you are a knucklehead. <laughs> oh, Lord, have I ain't got nobody in here this morning. Amen. You know you were a little rascal. Amen. And a little devil every now and then. Amen. And when they told you to do one thing, you did the opposite. Amen, well, somebody. Well, got in trouble. She had to keep coming to the school, amen. getting you out. And one thing about mamas, man, let me tell you something. A mama would go to the ends of the earth. Amen. Amen. A mama can see her child on camera stealing. She said, I don't think that's my baby. Right? I just, I don't, it don't look like it's me. It just, it just, look, man, we call them red-headed, but they ain't my boy. They ain't my girl. They ain't my girl. No, it, it's just something about mothers. I'm talking about a real Wonder Woman here. I'm not talking about no fictional Wonder Woman. A real Wonder Woman. Uh, so the midwives and some other women were God-fearing women because back then mothers had to do what they had to do. Amen. And sometimes women have to do mm -hmm. what they have to do. Amen, somebody. Amen. Uh, what do you say there for Brother Jones? Uh, I'm here today like a FedEx man to suggest to you that God wants us to appreciate mothers for being wonderful women. Amen. Uh, I'm here today to help us understand that we need to appreciate mothers mm -hmm. for being wonderful women. Amen. Wow. Notice verse number one of Exodus chapter number two. The Bible says, now a man from the house of Levi went and married a daughter of Levi. Mm -hmm. Now we understand that that man was Amram. Mm -hmm. uh, he is the father of Moses according to Exodus <coughs> chapter six. And verse number 20, as a matter of fact, he married his father's sister, which was called Jochebed. Y'all never heard of that before? You're learning something on today. Because both of them were of the tribe of Levi. So Moses' mother was named Jochebed. Say that one more time with me. Jochebed. And his father was named Amram. That's in Exodus chapter 6. Uh, and verse number 20. So I need you to understand what happened when this woman conceived. Verse 2 says, The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was beautiful, she hid him for how many days? Three months. All right. All right. I'm glad you're with me in the Bible. Three months here. All right. Now the Bible says, the word of God says, that when she saw him, he was what? Okay, don't everybody in the Bible with me. Verse number two, Exodus chapter two. The Bible says the woman conceived the boy's son, and when she uh, saw that he was beautiful, she hid him for how many months? Three months. Three months. The word God says that when she saw him, he was beautiful, which means that he was good. He was beautiful. He was pleasant. He was uh, desirable, and the woman conceived and bore this son, and she thought that he, he was what? Beautiful. Somebody shout beautiful. beautiful. Now, there is a clear, understood belief, Brother Klingman. Mm -hmm. It's basically an accepted rule that all babies are beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. 
Y'all all right? Now some of y'all look like you've seen a baby before and it's making you want to challenge my statement. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but uh, I don't know a mother that does not believe that her baby is not you. Am right. I right about it? Right. Have you ever, have you ever, but uh, brother, can you remember being called out by a neighbor? Uh, a friend, a kid back in the day, or somebody in school, even a cousin, yeah. and they called you ugly. Yeah. Oh, I ain't got nobody in here. Yeah. What about people in here? Raise your hand if somebody called you ugly before. Yeah. And you didn't even know what ugly was. You just know it was bad. They yeah. somebody. And you started to look at yourself differently when you went home. No, oh, you told mama. Uh -huh. Mama, somebody hurt my feelings. Mama, somebody ain't got nobody in here. Somebody told me I was ugly. And your mama said, baby, don't you? She looked at you and grabbed your breast and said, baby, don't you worry about it. They just jealous of you. They, they just teasing you because they know that you look good. They love somebody. And when mama told you, it just made you feel so I wish I had somebody. Mama just made you feel so good about it. And because she thought you were what? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, amen, somebody. Brian C. Jones, minister of the Grace Free Church of Christ here in beautiful Anderson, South Carolina. We just want to take out this time to thank you for watching. We are broadcasting to 1.4 million homes in upstate South Carolina, western North Carolina, and northeast Georgia. And we just want to say thank you for, for getting up every Thursday morning at 6.30 a.m. and supporting our broadcast. Uh, write us to let us know what you think. Write us to let us know that the teaching helped you. Uh, you can reach to us at graceviewcoc at gmail.com or you can write us at P.O. Box 722, Anderson, South Carolina, 29622. Also, make sure you like us on Facebook. The information should be on your screen. And just know all of the Passion for Christ episodes are archived on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash grace view sc god bless you for tuning in let's get back to this message it's going to bless your life thank you so much for watching so i need you to understand something powerful about wonderful women and wonder women here uh she looked at her child and she she just instinctively discovered and understood that the child was indeed beautiful the bible says the verse number two she hid him for three months somebody shot three months three months now you understand that it's very tough. It would be very, very tough. She's trying to hide her baby. Mm -hmm. We've got an infant child here. Mm -hmm. She's trying. Could you imagine trying to hide a child, knowing the child gonna be crying hysterically all the time, yeah. especially when he's hungry? Yeah. And you know that if your child is discovered and that he is a male, that he is going to be killed. That's right. Mm -hmm. So as a mother, she had to make some decisions. The Bible says that she hid. That's right. Uh, she hid. In other words, she put her child away so that nobody could find him for three months because she did not want to see her child die. Amen, somebody. Amen. Have you ever, have you ever, have you ever had something that you thought was good and uh, some other people were around? And so you had to hide it because you didn't want nobody else to get what you had. I wish I had somebody else. Some of you had to hide stuff in the refrigerator. <laughs> you want nobody to eat your leftovers. Never write about it. Uh, so when you have something good sometimes, you ever seen one of them dogs? Anybody in here know me? They're my country dogs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If, if, if you got a pack of dogs and one of them get a bone, mm -hmm. that one dog, he going to go run around the stump, run around the tree, he gonna find him a little hiding place, amen, amen somebody, amen. so he can enjoy his bone in private. Uh -huh. So so when, when, when Jochebed, Moses' mother, realized how beautiful her child was, she had to hide it. Because she realized that there was something good in him. Amen, somebody. Amen. Uh, so I need to help you understand uh, what the Bible says. And I want you to drop down to verse number three here. Uh, I'm gonna try to un unpack this thing for you. At verse number three, the Bible says, when she could hide him no longer. In other words, he got to the point where his cry was so loud, and she knew that he was in a position where she was going to get found out. She understood that. She knew instinctively that this is the time where I know I can't do nothing else for him 
and I can't hide them no more. That's right. And let me pause here for, for, for praise break here. Let me help you understand something. There needs to be a point in every mother's life where she understands at some point you can't hide them no more. Right. At some point, you're going to have to let them go. Right. Y'all ain't saying right. nothing this morning. You got to get to the point in your life where instinctively you realize that at this juncture I have done all. The Bible says she couldn't. She couldn't hide him no longer. Amen. She couldn't protect him no longer. She realized the danger of her trying to keep him. Amen. Let's keep reading here. But the Bible says she got a wicker basket <clears throat> covered it with tar yep. and pitch. Yep. Then she put the child into it and set it among the reeds by the bank of the Nile. Have you ever See, 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 women, they, they, these are wonderful women. Somebody shout wonderful women. <laughs> Have you ever been around a wonderful woman that was um, resourceful? Come on, church. She was, she was innovative. Yes. She was creative. Yes. Now, you never seen a basket before. You know, baskets have like little holes in them. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, the way, the way they make, the way they're woven. Right. And, and if you try to put that basket in the water, that water's going to overflow it. Right. So she put something inside of it. To make it a uh, stern where, mm -hmm. where, where if she put a baby in there, it would just float on the water. Yeah. Amen. She made sure that it was comfortable. Anybody know that you 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 see a mom that just knows some home remedies? Yeah. yeah. She know how to put some stuff on you that the doctor don't know nothing about. Uh -huh. She know how to make you drink a little bit of this uh -huh. and a little bit of that uh -huh. and rub a little bit of that on you. Uh -huh. And it stinks and it doesn't smell good. Uh -huh. And she know what to tell you to do or how long to lay down and she get a rag put on your head and it's, it's dripping. I don't know what in the world. It smells crazy. Take you to some crazy syrup and some careful for me to give us some money. And it's some car oil. Y'all don't know nothing about what I'm talking about. And she know how to make you feel better. Amen. She's a wonderful right. woman. She may have not even went to college. She may not know nothing about school. But she know instinctively God has put something in her to help her take I'm talking about a wonderful woman here. Yeah. 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 Wonderful yeah. woman. Yeah. She just instinctively had something in her. So she said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put my boy in this basket. I'm going to cover it up real good so no water can get in. I'm going to make sure that the tar and the pitch has got him fit in there real good. And I'm just going to trust the Lord. Yeah. Because I don't want to see nothing bad happen to my child. Y'all still with me? Yeah. And the text says when she couldn't hide him no longer keep him or protect the child any longer because the mother was the protector. Right. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. She protected her child, watch this, the best that she could. Yeah. Then she had to be creative yeah. and do something to help out her child. Right. So Moses, Moses' mother got a wicker basket covered it with tar and pitch. Now in order for him not to be discovered or killed, God had to give her that idea Amen. so that she could keep the boy alive. That's right. And watch this, beloved. Don't miss this part. She had to have faith yeah. that if she let him go, yeah. I said let him go, right. that God will protect him. Yes, he will. She had to have faith yeah. that if she let him go, God would not only protect the child, yeah. that God would somehow, some way, allow her to be reunited yeah. with him. The child. Am I right about it? And she was willing to sacrifice being with her child physically for the child's life and for the security of the child's future. That's right. So sometimes mothers have to do things. She didn't want to let the boy go. She wanted to be with the boy. But she had to make a decision for the child's future. Because she realized that if I keep him, and as loud as he's crying, and as all these people are around us, there's a possibility that he will get found out, and now he's going to be put to death. Mm -hmm. So as a protector, somebody shall protect her. Yeah. As a protector, as a nurturer, she made the decision mm -hmm. to trust God. Somebody shall trust God. Trust God. Said, I'm going to trust God. Yeah. I'm going to be creative as I can and try yeah. to keep him. And I just believe that God is going to reunite me yeah. with my child and I'm going to let him go because it's the best thing for his future. Yeah. Yeah. And God instinctively placed that in her. And I want, I want, I want you to understand something uh, because this is so important here, beloved. 
I want to show you a few principles. And I'm going to give you some observations and the lesson will be yours about having a wonderful woman. Amen, somebody. Amen. Anybody know anything about a wonderful woman? Amen, Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. Because God wants us to appreciate mothers for being wonderful women. Amen. Now, because she was willing to do the right thing. Wow. Trust God. Yeah. She didn't want to let him go, but she knew she had to. Right. She Amen. had to trust God, trust God to help God her child back to her. Yeah. Amen. Now, here's the one of the first things she did. She trusted God yeah. that he would allow the child to be returned to her Amen. at the right time. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mothers, <laughs> you got to trust God when they go home yeah. <laughs> that you will still, you got to trust God that God will somehow, some way, still allow you to be connected to that child. Amen. And at the right time when you let them go, because it's the best thing for their future, God will reunite you with them. Amen. Do I have a witness in this place? Amen. And then you have to trust God. <clears throat> That the child will be guided by the right people. Yeah. I said the right people yeah. uh -huh. who would help the child and not hurt it. Because if you read the next verse, yeah. in verse number four, oh church, this is good right here, church. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the pulpit right now. Uh, Exodus chapter number two, and let's read verse number four. I'm feeling good right about now. Uh, and the Bible says, his sister, somebody shout his sister. His sister. His sister. His sister. And this is, watch this now, this is after. Mm -hmm. Moses' mother has put him down by the by the reeds uh, and by the weeds on the Nile River. So could you uh, could you imagine that she put the wick, the wicker basket that Moses is in, which is already secure with tar and pitch? She put it on the edge of the bank. Wow. Yeah. And all of a sudden, verse four says, "Watch this." Mm -hmm. uh, verse number four says, "His sister stood at a distance." To find out what would happen to him. That's right. I, I told you, you've got to trust God That's that right. when you let the child go, yeah. God will direct your child to the right people yeah. Yeah. who will not harm them and won't hurt them. That's, right. That's called having faith. Somebody shout faith. faith. When you live the name up. You have to let him go and have faith. Y'all yeah. yeah. ain't saying nothing yeah. this morning. You got to let him go and have faith. Amen, somebody. So it's not a coincidence That's right. that Pharaoh's daughter came down to take a bath at the same time and at the same place where Moses' basket lay. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. Let me? Let me tell you this story. So, so his sister Miriam is watching to see what's going to happen That's to right. Moses. Amen. And simultaneously, the same Pharaoh that said every child, male boy, must be put to death, uh -huh. his daughter comes down to take a bath yeah. at the same time yeah. that Moses' mama put him to lay in that basket by the Nile River. Amen. That's no coincidence right. that his daughter saw the basket. And when she saw the basket, she heard the boy crying, and she said, uh, she asked one of her uh, uh, her servants to go down there and get the boy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when the servant went down and got the boy and brought him back, she saw that he was a Hebrew boy. Yeah. And then Moses' sister asked Pharaoh's daughter uh, in the Brian Jones version, you know what, this is a Hebrew boy. Um, uh, you probably ain't been a he Helen. So uh, I know a woman who can help it. Yeah. I, I know a woman who can nurse this boy. Yeah. I know a woman who understands what these Hebrew boys be doing. Yeah. And, and, and Moses' uh, sister said, I, I think I know somebody that can help it. Yeah. And she said, you want me to take it to him? And uh, Pharaoh's daughter said, yes. Yeah. Now what I want you to understand is, when, when Moses' sister said, I think I know somebody that can raise him and nurse him, she was talking about her own mama. Uh -huh. And in this place. Yeah. So God how to send you to the right people amen, amen somebody amen. to protect you, amen, amen. somebody amen. in the right time, if you have faith in God amen. amen. so it's no coincidence beloved that Pharaoh's daughter uh, had pity on him amen. notice your Bible uh, in Exodus chapter 2 and verse number 5, let's look at verse number 5 the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the Nile with her maidens walking alongside the Nile and she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid and she was brought and she brought it to her. Verse 6, when she opened it, she did what? She saw the child. Amen, somebody. Amen. And behold, the boy was what? Right. The boy was crying. Notice what your Bible says. And she had pity on him. Right. Amen. Do you not know that wonderful women, when they have to make a rough, tough decision, mm -hmm. 
to allow the child to go, they have to have enough faith and trust in God that God will send the right people yes. to the child Amen. when you can't be there with them. Then somebody that will have pity on them. Right. Amen. <laughs> ain't God all right? Amen. I said, ain't God all right? Yes. Because, because you know how mamas are. They can't sleep. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. They worrying. You won't answer your phone. You won't respond back to a text. And they calling, they calling, they calling, right. leaving messages, and they worried about you. Right. And whether you're a parent or whether you're a son or a daughter, you understand that dynamic. It meant somebody. Right. So, so the parent at some point has to decide, I'm not going to have no heart attack worry. Y'all ain't saying amen right now. I told you I didn't have no money to buy no amen. Amen. So you said they're going to help me. Amen. So amen. Yeah, Lord. So I need you to understand at some point you got to let them go. That's right. That's what wonderful women did. That's what Jochebed, Moses' mama did. She trusted that God will lead him to the right person. Amen. Amen. All of a sudden, here comes Pharaoh's daughter, a daughter of a Pharaoh that wants to kill the boy, but this daughter wants to allow the boy to be alive. Because she had pity on that boy. Because Pharaoh, excuse me, Moses' mother trusted God that God would leave somebody to protect that boy. Amen, somebody. Amen. And it's not no coincidence. It's not a coincidence that Moses' sister was watching from a distance yeah. and knew the right thing to say. Yeah. Watch this. Yeah. At the right time yeah. to save her brother. Uh -huh. Know this verse number 7 in your Bible. Exodus 2 and verse number 7. Then his sister said, somebody shall say it, yeah. to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go? And call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for you. Isn't that awesome? Amen. So Moses' sister goes up to Pharaoh's daughter and says, I know somebody that can help him. That's right. So another, what are you doing? God had already worked it out yeah. while they were trying to figure it out. Amen. And can I tell you in life, while we're trying to figure it out, can't go to sleep. Oh, so anybody ever had stress balls popping on the back of your neck? Uh, sitting on the couch and couldn't figure it out. Couldn't understand how God was going to provide. Couldn't understand how God was going to do it. And all of a sudden, God made a way. Come on in here, somebody. God made a way. Out of nowhere, he meant somebody. And God blessed you. And you realize, man, I shouldn't be doing all that work. It didn't help you. Right. All it did was take more hairs off your head, right. and the hair that stayed, it just made them grayer. Yeah. <laughs> your blood pressure 300 over 120. <laughs> when God can handle it, look at your person next to you and say, God can handle it. Right. Look at the person on the other side and say, God can handle it. Right. God can handle it. Right. God can handle it. Yeah. He knows you're concerned about your boy. Yeah. He knows you're concerned about your girl. Uh, he knows what you're going through, so God can handle it. Yeah. We handle at the Grace View Church of Christ want to thank you for listening. If the Passion for Christ television broadcast has blessed your life this morning and you would like to donate, you can go online to www.graceviewcoc.com, click on the donate tab, and you can make your tax deductible donation to this broadcast. God bless you and tune in next week. Our God, he is alive. Praise him. Praise him. The one who is our wife. Praise him. Praise him. May the sun, the moon, the sky.